Hi everyone, Cliff here with another deck review. This time we're going to do Great Nature. This is a pretty fun clan, I gotta admit. There, I don't think I've ever played with another clan that has this much rearguard pressure as Great Nature. Um, so starting Vanguard, I start off with a Blackboard Parrot. His skill is you can put him into soul, and then you give another unit the ability that if it's retired at the end phase, you draw a card. In my opinion, this is one of three perfectly viable starting vanguards you can run. Um, most people will probably run this guy, Flash Pharmacet. Um, his skill is you counter blast two and you give him another unit 4,000. But then that unit is retired at the end phase. So, with the amount of counter blast that's open with this deck, you can easily give something 8,000 power for a turn. Now, this is pretty much that last turn final push. For that six damage. And then some people may run Acorn Master. This is the grade 3 searcher of the clan. So you counter blast one, you put him into soul, and then you check the top five for a grade 3 unit. And I to your hand. And like I said, all three are viable, all three work, but just I prefer the parrot because I want to go for that early mid game hand advantage. Start out with Grey Ones from Four Pencil Squire Hamaske. He is awesome. So his skill is you counter blast one. Um, when he's retired at the end phase, you counter blast one. You search another copy of him from your deck and add it to your hand. So um, not only do you pretty much wash, you pretty much just pretty much a wash, but you thin out your deck. Which is what you want to do with Great Nature. And then plus, if you combine his skill with his skill, not only do you get another copy to your hand, you draw a card. Three Coiling Duck Bill. Um, his skill is when he's called your rear guard during the main phase, you can give another unit the ability that if it's retired, you. At the end phase, you draw a card. So basically, the same skill as him. So basically, the main thing you want to do is put stack everything on him off stage. Because not only does he replace himself, you get to draw more cards. Then I have two stamp sea otters. Having a 6k booster that can be retired due to other effects is really nice. Especially if you go up against um, decks that retire a lot, like Kagero and Narukami. This is, you pretty much laugh in their face, because it's like, what, what are you going to do with my booster? You can't do anything. Ha. Um, I run four perfect guards, because with the amount of hand that you can generate, why not run four? And then finally, I run two Silver Wolves. Um, Silver Wolf is basically my right target, because as you can see, I pretty much don't want to ride any other grade one in my deck. I mean, I'll ride my perfect guard, I'm fine with that, but I'd rather as have him as rear guard, him as rear guard, him as rear guard. And then for grade twos, we have three Geograph Giants. Simple um, 10k guy, Panda Bear. And then I have four Compass Lions. Um, this this pretty much is interchangeable with Geodraft Giants, so either I have four Compass Lines or four Giants. Um, you have to be careful when playing him, because his skill is you have to retire something at the end phase. It's not a restraint, you just have to retire something. The only way you can get over that is if you ride him with a, with a clear field. But then again, you have to have a clear field for that turn, and no, I'd rather not. Um, so basically you want to ha you want to ride him or call him when you have a target to retire. Like, you, like if you have Hamaste, that's cool. Play him. Attack for 17, retire Hamaste, get another one. Hopefully, maybe you stacked Blackboard Paired skill or Coiling Duck Bill skill with him. So that way you draw more cards. Um, next. Four... Binoculars Tigers with which one? Which one are they? Yes, 
These two being SP? No, that's not SP. These two. These two are the SP ones. They look so nice. I love them. Hmm. Okay. So, this is pretty much the silent Tom of the deck. Everyone who's ever played Great Nature or who knows about Great Nature will gun for this card. So, protect it if you can. If it's not worth it, don't worry about it. Um, his skill is when he attacks the vanguard. He doesn't have to hit. He just has to declare an attack at the vanguard. You can choose another great nature rearguard and give it 4,000 power. But then just retire at the end phase. So notice how I have a lot of 6k boost boosters in the deck. That means I can pretty much have a 10k booster every turn. Especially if it's Sea Augur. But he's just a free 10k booster. He's so good. And then finally for the grade threes, I have three Magnet Crocodile. Three just because I really don't want to run into him that often. He is the... He's like one of the best rear guards that you can have. Especially with the Great Nature because you're hitting for such high numbers. And then, of course, the main star of the deck. School, school Hunter Leopold. He has, he has the same skill as Binoculars Tiger, so when he declares an attack against the Vanguard, you can give something 4,000, but then it's retarget the end phase. Now his limit break, this is actually very interesting. You counterblast one, and if something is retarget at the end phase, you can bring it back. So, let's say, um, he's Vanguard. Let's say for the sake of argument, there's, there's a Hamas stage down here. So you attack, you give Hamasa the boost, so you swing it for 20. The end phase, Hamasa gets retired. You would activate Hamasa's effect to search another one. But then you counter blast one for Leopold, you bring Hamasa back. Second thing ever happened, and you have a free card in your hand. So, oh yeah, and trigger, trigger lineup. I have... Four draw triggers. Four crit. A crit. Four heal. Now, I'm just going to throw this out there. Ruler Chameleon has the same effect as Hamaske. You kind of lost one if he is retired at the end phase. He's searching another one. I would only recommend that if you're at dire need for shield. Otherwise, you're losing a critical trigger. Um, changes for the deck, I know set 9 sneak preview is, I think it's this weekend, so, wow. Um, I'm either going to do, like, a stand variant with Polaris, or I'm going to do a crit based with the marching, um, marching band animals. So, you know, there's, like, a chicken, a dog, and a cat, and then if, like, the chicken gets retired in phase, he searches a dog, and the dog searches the cat, and the cat searches the chicken. Um... So yeah, I'll let you guys know how it works out. Um, like I said, this client is so much fun. It can create so much pressure for the opponents. So let's just take something that happens pretty much all the time. I have a silver wolf there. So I have a musk over there because I like musk. And actually, let's have let's have a musk over there. And then, let's have... Where's my Sea Augur? Here's Sea Augur. Okay. So basically, you attack with this column. You get power to Moss Caves. That's where you have a 10k booster. You attack again. Give another boost. So he's a 14k booster. So this is already swinging for 26 without triggers. Chances are you thinned out your deck a lot um, with Moss Caves. So you're probably going to hit a trigger, so that's going to be swinging for 31. And that's really easy to do. That's why people come for this card. Because they don't want you swinging for 26 pretty much every turn. And then if you run off of Moskes, you just slap a Sea Auger behind there, and it's the same thing. Okay? So yeah, um, rate 
comment, subscribe. Um, we will have, I will have other videos up and rare to go in, in a little bit. Um, I plan on going to the sneak peek this weekend. Um, and I will probably post a video on how that went, okay? Alright, see you guys.